It might not look like it, and the title might not give you that impression, but Elevator Fight is the third game in the Astro Wars series. And by third game in the series, I mean that the perfunctory story in the manual has ties to the Astro Wars story. In this case, it takes place one year before the Astro Wars games, and you're playing as Arlem, agent for the Galactic Federation, who has to infiltrate an underground base and destroy a computer 31 floors below the surface. The complex is a shaft, and the floors are linked by a series of elevators that would never pass the fire code. It'll take you 10 elevators to evacuate from sub-basement 30 in an emergency. The action in the game consists of riding those elevators and shooting any robots that pop out of doors. If you couldn't tell immediately from the title, this is Epoch's take on Taito's elevator action. Taito's arcade game about a super spy traveling down a building and shooting a lot of guys as he goes. Previous Cassette Vision games that took inspiration from existing games tended to expand the concept quite a bit. But in the case of Elevator Fight, the things that they added to the game aren't especially well thought out. While you're playing, the right button jumps and the left button shoots, and yes, this is the exact opposite of previous game Punch Boy. They hadn't invented consistency in interfaces yet. The game is divided into blocks of 10 floors, and your goal in every block is to collect the keys that will unlock the passage to go on. This little lightning shock on the floor is what blocks your way, and even though it looks like you could, you're not allowed to jump over it. You also can't fall down it once it's open, so you have to jump over it after the energy is gone. You also can't fall down or jump over elevator shafts. In fact, if you're at the bottom of an elevator shaft, you can't even walk underneath the elevator. You're just not allowed to enter that space unless the elevator's there. Now, you could just wait around for the elevator to eventually drift towards you, but that could take forever. So instead, you just press into the elevator shaft, and that will call it to you. It doesn't matter where in the shaft it is, or if there's somebody riding in it, it just comes to you. According to the manual, the enemies that you're facing are robots, and they come in a few different varieties. Mainly, it's variations on how likely they are to shoot. This is actually a bit of a problem in elevator fight, because enemies will press right up against the elevator shaft themselves, and then it becomes a matter of who's the fast draw. And oftentimes, it's not going to be you. Your gun will just be above people while they can shoot your feet. There is another way that you can descend. The floor sections that are red allow robots to walk over them, but you'll pass straight through them, landing safely on the floor below. Other hazards that you'll have to deal with are grasping claws that will carry you across pits, and laser beams that will fire periodically from the ceiling. Every 10-floor block has four keys in it. They're randomly distributed among the panels in that area. On amateur difficulty, you can collect these in any order, but on professional, you can only collect the one that is blinking and that will mean you have to go up and down a bit before you collect them all. You also start out with 8 lives on Amateur, but only get 4 on Professional, something that's becoming a staple of the Super Cassette Vision. If you make it to floor 31, then the game changes. You have to cross a series of platforms that are randomly moving up and down, and to do that you have to jump between them with the right button. Here, your jump will only take you one space, not two and the random movement of the platforms makes it trickier than it seems. You will want to make this jump as both platforms are moving down, otherwise you'll have no chance of safely making it. Punch out both sides, then go back to the middle, and the computer explodes. After that, you start all over again with the enemies being a bit faster. It's not even a different building layout, it's the exact same building. One nice thing in Elevator Fight is that when you're killed, you come back at the exact floor where you died. In the computer room, it'll put you back at the center, but that usually doesn't matter. I feel like Elevator Fight is missing a lot of what was fun from its inspiration, Elevator Action. You're not nearly as mobile, the way that you use elevators isn't nearly as flexible, and you can't even squish any robots with the elevator. And then when it comes to the enemies, your mitigation options are really limited. You're just going to get shot up a lot, and there isn't a whole lot you can do about it. The best option in many cases is to just stand around and wait for them to come to you on the elevator. 
This is the most ambitious Super Cassette Vision game yet. The 30 floors might be continuous, but there's effectively four stages here. And the obstacles that they added as you descend are interesting, at least. But in the end, Elevator Fight is about as much fun as waiting around for your elevator.